drivers at the French Grand Prix trying to win this on the final lap. The three wide again, Guillaume down the inside. Guillaume moves across, they're both in front of Milan and Pouget. But before you know it, we find ourselves here in the very final race of the competition. And then they see truck racing and they think, this is crazy, you know, these are five ton machines, 1200 horsepower brake. Oh, look at that switchback. Oh, <laughs> Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.
Good evening everybody, welcome to Chaz Draycott Media and welcome to another two rounds of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. We are very excited to be back and welcoming all the drivers back from their mid-season break partway through the championship. It's been another very busy campaign so far with a mixture of endurance events and of course sprint races as well and tonight will be two of those sprint races. A 20 minute sprint then a 30 minute sprint with just a few minutes break in between and the drivers will be working very hard like they were at the Red Bull Ring a couple of weeks ago. My name is Chaz Draycott but I am beyond delighted to welcome back to the commentary box my colleague Ed May. Ed it's been so so quiet here without you believe it or not with me here <laughs> and uh, it's well been great to see that you're back with us mate how have you been how's it all going yes great to be back and back for the remainder of the season i'll be here from now until round 15 so hope you all enjoyed the relative peace and quiet with my absence <laughs> but yeah it's good to be finally sorted out i've recently moved house and been in a state where i wasn't really able to get my rig set up and have everything sorted out to properly commentate so now that i've got that all fixed up i'm here and i'm not going anywhere and it's great to be back and i'll tell you what i've missed you Chaz, but i've also really missed everyone in the sim racer magazine gt4 challenge all the races because my tuesday nights have just felt empty without them <laughs> i've been really really miserable i'm not surprised mate that's the thing with this championship it's always busy and there's always a lot going on and to be fair it's nice and busy in the championship standings as well nils core top of the pile at the moment with 135 points to the 133 of Taylor Adams. They've both got Dominic Brennan behind them, just in, just about holding on to third place out of James Holman and Danny Lee, the next driver out of the five to get over 100 points so far. Christopher Smith's having a strong season. So too is Kyle Ridley as well. And Simon Povey taking the win last time out at Spa was a very, very happy bunny. In the team's championship, there's only five points between RD Simsport and Regenta Sim Racing with Danny Lee Pro Sim Rig and Spontech CDM Esports and Satellite Racing all very close together as well. It's typically close as ever, all up and down the championship. And we've got another great turnout tonight of 24 cars that have made it back to the circuit. But what about this circuit though, Ed? I mean, Ledenon is... <laughs> a very unique track it's not one that many people have either heard of or seen i mean i barely know the layout to this place i was supposed to commentate here a few years ago in real life but unfortunately the opportunity never actually uh, sort of came true in the end but what a great place to go racing it looks like a riot of a track it really does the elevation especially when you're coming out of that final corner up towards turn one it's almost like a sheer cliff when you see the drivers going up to it it really does boggle the mind and then some interesting quirks about the circuit as well. The fact that the first real sort of like turn one is after a couple of sort of left hand kinks does mean, of course, that drivers in qualifying will, if they aren't really going to be able to aim for it, aim for that left hand side of the track because you can maybe pick up a few extra positions at the start. Absolutely. And another unique characteristic of it is you can see here, actually, as we watch Kyle Ridley complete one of his final laps in practice is that there's not really grass directly next to the circuit. There's runoff area all the way around this track, which is just a really strange characteristic of it. You've got the curbs set very far away from any gravel and grass, and the drivers can use a lot of it to their advantage, but in other places they do get penalised for it. But you can see there the elevation is just absolutely massive in this place. I'm trying to think of where it reminds me of, really, with that sort of rise and fall everywhere, but... I don't think there's many tracks in the world with that much. Maybe Phillip mm. Island with some of the ways that the hairpins come out. That corner from that angle there actually looks like the corkscrew at Laguna Seca, especially with the fact it's followed by a fast left. But I like this section here. Down into the hairpin, right at the bottom, hard on the brakes. There's a big dip on the inside, a humongous pit wall. And out of the final corner, wiggling right. up the straight and over the crest of the hill. Kyle Ridley having a right wobble there. It's a great looking it's circuit. It's a bit like Alton Park when you got sort of deer leap, haven't you? You're going up that big crest at yeah. the end, going through that left-hander up to the start-finish line. It's very similar to that also, of course. I mean, the only one I can think of is Cadwell Park. The elevation yeah. changes at that circuit are something else as well. But this track is going to be interesting for the drivers. They've never raced here before, not in any of our sort of special events, because it is also brand new to iRacing. And it's only recently became a free track so it was due to happen earlier on in the season but with iRacing announcing changes and with this track being made uh, part of the iRacing service for free well not free but if you with a subscription essentially mm. 
so just to push it back, just so any drivers that hadn't bought the circuit wouldn't need to worry about buying it, they'd just be able to get it for free. Yeah, absolutely. And thanks again to all the drivers that took part in the vote for that as well. There was a bunch of them. I think nine drivers in the end already owned the circuit and had paid the money for it, but they didn't mind the fact that, you know, it was saving more people money throughout the campaign. And obviously it's part of the community here at Sim Racing Magazine. We've got an amazing group of people behind this championship and it's great to have them all the time on the circuit. 24 drivers on the track at the moment. The capacity is 36 this season, but a couple of the drivers don't tend to take part in the sprint rounds. It's not really for them, but they're well entitled to choose and pick when they do that, so that's fair enough. But at the moment, well, we've got a very typical trio at the front of the order. The man that we ride on board with here is Taylor Adams, the current second position man in the championship, with Matt Slight as teammate for Regenta Sim Racing, about a tenth and a half behind, and then Nils Core third. We've got James Holman in front, although I say that. And <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, welcome back, Simon. It's good, it's good to see you again. I don't know where he'd been hiding and all that, but I didn't notice that Simon was even on the circuit for a minute, and he's one of my drivers. Whoops. But Simon racing for Sponsex CDM Esports Pink. We've got this very badly placed camera angle here that gets covered up by half of the timing tower that Chaz has decided was going to look all artsy fartsy we might have to figure that one out later but still good to have Simon back on the grid again and he's only a few cars on circuit behind one of his main rivals Nils Core. Nils has been supreme so far this season though Ed he's just had two little bits of bad luck that have dropped him a few points but four race wins and a second place it's not a bad record out of six uh, sorry seven rounds is it yeah it's certainly not at all and I think Nils Core is the driver that we Earmarked, didn't we, at the start of the season for a potential championship charge? But then again, we also noted that the Regenta Sim Racing drivers, that both of their sort of efforts in the early stages of the season showed a lot of promise at Laguna Seca. Obviously, it was a bit of a tough round for them, both of them having issues, but we saw some promise, and it's certainly been delivered by Taylor Adams and Matt Slight. And I think, in sort of Matt's case, I think he's sort of borne the brunt of the bad luck, especially at the start of the season. I'm not sure how the rest of the season has gone on for them both. But at the moment, Taylor Adams looking like a worthy opponent for sort of a more seasoned driver in Nils Core. Absolutely. Lovely shot up here from the scenic camera as all the cars disappear and will reappear in just a moment as qualifying is about to get underway. It's an open qualifying session as well. So you do get all of the cars out on track and typically the two Regenta cars get flying. There is uh, Toby Johns as well. Uh, on the left-hand side of the screen. He's just made his way out onto the track in the McLaren. Very steep uphill pit lane here at Le Dénon. You can see there, by the way, the garage numbers have moved around. What a lovely looking field we've got again, though, this season. I think I saw there that uh, Mark Johnson had a new livery on his Aston Martin, did he? Let's have a quick look at it. He's hidden behind the wall at the moment, but I think he's got... Oh, seemingly a, uh, a different spec map on the car, I think. I'm not quite sure what's gone on there. It looks slightly different anyway. He's just decided to pull over to one side. There's the Oris Racing Green machine of Kim Such. And there's that hairpin. Look, that, see, that camera angle on its own looks fantastic, but unfortunately I'm going to uh, have to maybe move it a little bit so it doesn't sort of get caught behind the, uh, the timing tower. I'm going to have to sort of maybe move it over here, but Kim's now got away from the, uh, the camera, so I've given it a shift, but... We'll get there. We'll figure it out. Uh, Dennis Van Bielen's just been overtaken there by uh, his ex-teammate Nils Core. Nils also in the BMW. That's been one of the storylines of the season, really, hasn't it, Ed? That the BMW is sort of back in force this season with a, a bunch more drivers behind the wheel of it, really doing it justice. Yeah, definitely. But also, something that I've noticed is the sort of presence of more Porsches as well. We noticed this at the start of the season, but the Porsche as well has really started to become a favoured car after being reduced to, was it one and two drivers at certain mm. rounds? Yeah. Thing for the dinky little bit of kit. Again, mm. not sure if it's that small in real life. It seems a little bit wider than how it is in iRacing. It seems very sort of squashed yeah. in the sim. Yeah, it's like it's gone down a really small alleyway somehow. Uh, Rob Sharp back on the grid as well, actually. That's one of the changes since last time you were with us, Ed. Rob has been welcomed back after... He, uh, he broke his ribs earlier in the, uh, mm. in the year, bless him, but he's back fighting fit and on the grid again. And he's been just as quick as he was before, to be fair. He had a bit of a, a slowish start to uh, his round at uh, Spa-Francorchamps, but he was still 
happy to get some points. Uh, another point I want to make is that I want to thank our sponsors for the championship. Boris Digital, Crockery Direct, Derbyshire Holiday Homes and Bespoke Shelters as well. Grateful to have all of you guys on board. It really is a joy all the time. And Heinz Mayer, one of the championship sponsors, is giving us a nice drifting demonstration there. That's just a little uh, bit of a commentator's curse for you there, Heinz, just to throw that one in there straight out of the way. Got to get it in early, haven't you, Ed? Absolutely, as we're starting to see now. Oh, how have I missed the Seabrook livery of Mike Murphy on our screens, along with Ben Chalcroft. Two of them have been changing their livery throughout the course of the season. And what flavour is Ben rocking with now? Uh, it's a French fries. Uh, he did message me earlier today. I will confirm this for you all, everybody. Uh, he messaged me saying, uh, weekly livery update for you, Chaz. French round, it has to be fries. Cheese and bacon fries tonight. So he's flying the flag for them, and I love it. I absolutely love it. It's just, it's, it's one of those fun I love how everyone in, everyone in the community has got on board as well. Every time someone's gone around to the shops, they always seem to snag an extra packet of Seabrooks to post in the oh, Discord. Yeah. yeah, and they all check, they, they compare the prices and everything. To be fair, you've yeah. done that today to, to me as well, haven't you? You've got some for the occasion. I've got some fries as well with the same mindset. I thought, why not celebrate my return? with some Seabrook crisps. Of course, we're not sponsored, but it'd be lovely if we were. Part of the fun, part of the fun. Uh, Simon Povey is currently fastest at the moment in qualifying. There's a surprise in the number three McLaren for Spontex CDM Esports Pink. He's changed teams. It was gold at the start of the year, but everyone was taking the mick out of him, so he wanted a pink one instead. And Matt Slight is currently second fastest, but look at this. He's given his teammate Taylor Adams some slipstream here. It's not really a circuit where you can give one another slipstream, is it though, Ed? Because if we look at the track map, I don't think there's a straight bit on it. <laughs> no, there isn't. It's a very tight and technical twisting circuit, but maybe going in towards about up here is probably where you're most likely to gain any sort of benefit up the hill. Any sort of lack of resistance in the air will mm. certainly help out. Going up to the line now, Matt Slight will be the first to break the beam with his teammate right in behind. Oh, and it is that. Slight who is slightly faster. <laughs> Yeah, he's edged him a little bit there. Ben Chalcraft does a purple final sector, and Simon Povey goes even quicker once again with a 124.306. Pulls over straight away. Dean Powell's done well, actually, and is up there in fourth place. Uh, we have Ryan Penny in the chat saying, Evening, chaps, what's the track temperature tonight? Uh, it's currently 28 degrees Celsius. It's only 10 past 11 in the morning in the sim, so it's, uh, it's pretty stable, to be fair, in terms of the timing for today. For some reason, the timing didn't seem to be ticking up there. It just says it's 10 past 11 and the time progression doesn't seem to be moving, which is weird. But still, the uh, the drivers will all be enjoying the fact that it's not a roasting hot circuit for them tonight. We've got the two Minardi Simsport cars in 6th and 7th at the moment behind Christopher Smith. Nils Kaur is down in 8th, James Holman is ninth, and Rob Sharp 10th and Danny Lee 11th. That just shows you how strong the pedigree is at the front of this field again, Ed. I mean one of the main talking points of the championship this season is just how strong the driver mm. list is and let's not forget as well Danny Lee will be uh, streaming his own point of view of the race tonight over on his YouTube channel but he's certainly a driver that's been making his Aston Martin look good with his teammate Dean yeah he certainly has and of course Danny does put out some really, really nice content some excellent stuff as well about the iRacing rain that I uh, noticed mm. up on my YouTube feed about sort of the way you approach things differently. Of course, iRacing has recently implemented their new weather system, and I'll tell you what, the reviews for it are, well, certainly nothing but glowing, aren't they, Chaz? I don't know if you've yeah. had a chance to get behind the wheel and test it out, but... Unfortunately it's... not. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm going through a house move of my own uh, at the moment where I'm in a very fortunate... In the, same prop in the same boat. Yeah, I'm in a very fortunate situation, though, where I'm able to still go and decorate the other house because I know the people mm. that are getting getting rid and uh, I'm, I'm renting from them so I've been able to be at the house and decorate but I've spent a lot of my days doing that rather than driving in the rain but I did plan on streaming it at some point my very first go in the rain and I will probably still do that I've missed the boat quite literally but I think it'll be uh, quite fun to try and stream that on my YouTube channel at some point so we'll see mm. um, there is also a question sorry uh, from the chat What's Thomas up? saying are you cooking up any special events there are a couple of ideas floating around at the moment, but nothing announced just yet. Like I say, with the house move going on, 
there's a very small window of timing to get stuff planned. So we're going to see how the rest of this season goes. And there will be a special event between this championship and the next one that we do. Uh, we're going to do as many of them as we can, though, we promise you. We will uh, We will really go for it with, uh, with events and championships and so on and try and cook as many up as we can for this season. Yeah, definitely. Of course, the rain not affecting the proceedings tonight because the GT4s haven't been sort of added on to the list of cars that are compatible with the iRacing rain update. Might be coming in a future one, but GT3s certainly are and a few other little cars as well. Some like the Formula cars that they've recently added have got the rain on. Sadly, not the Formula 3, which is a crying shame because I absolutely love <laughs> that thing and would dream to see it in the wet, but maybe down the line in the future, who knows. Don't need to have any rain to spice up the action out on circuit though, do we? As Simon Povey continues to go fastest, not quite improving on his most recent attempt with Taylor Adams and Matt Slight just in behind. It's looking to be very exciting and Matt Slight, he'll be able to maybe put some pressure on Simon Povey because the first few corners as it stands are left-handers and with the drivers mm. lining up, sort of Simon on the left, Taylor on the right, Taylor's gonna have to really worry about the cars in behind getting the jump on him. Thankfully, his main championship rival, Nils Kaur, is in that same boat as it stands mm. in fourth place on that right-hand side, just behind Taylor. Yeah, it can be also important to make sure that you're on the right side of the grid, but obviously with qualifying, it's mighty difficult to do that. I was just about to say that other than Nils Kaur and Rob Sharp, there was a fantastic sort of culmination of all the manufacturers sticking together a moment ago. We had a lot of McLarens together. The two Aston Martins near the front were right together. Then it was a bunch of Beamers. Uh, the second place portion of the field is Paul Goffin for SRM Yellow. I've got a purple first sector by Nils Kaur just ahead of him. Not sure if that's... No, not an overall improvement. He's actually only one thousandth of a second behind Matt Slight as well. So one thousandth determining what side of the grid they're on at the moment as James Holman hops up there in the Mercedes. James doing another mighty job as ever. You can see him sort of balancing the car and getting it to rotate on the throttle and on the brakes around there just to try and get that front end in. The Mercedes hasn't been the car to pick this season by the look of it, but he's done a good job. Martin Kenyon is facing the wrong way there at the hairpin. He's decided to reverse up the hill and try and J-turn it. Oh, and he's going to put it in the wall, unfortunately. Uh, Kyle Ridley is in the session but hasn't done a lap just yet so I'm not quite sure what's going on there uh, let's not forget as well we've got two races tonight we get the top 10 on the grid for the second race of the night reversed so if you finish in 10th place in race one you'll end up on pole position for race two and it is a longer second race of the night as well so there's a bit more of a game to play with this evening aside from the strategy isn't there Ed because it's just flat out driving all night but there's still a long, bigger picture to think about. Yeah, definitely. Of course, the, you get the same points for the first race as you do the second race. Mm -hmm. but it is all about maximising what you can take from the evening. So go maybe all out for the first race and then see where you end up in the second and maybe play things a little bit coy if you have maybe some struggles in that first race. Aim to get the reverse grip pole position and see where that mm. puts you, of course you can afford to win the race and have plenty more time to make your way up through the field with it being slightly longer 30 minutes as opposed to 20 minutes for Definitely. the first race as you explained as we have some drivers here looking for that all-important reverse grid pole position as it stands in qualifying we saw Dennis Van Bielen for Chicane Online Racing currently sitting in 12th place but it's looking mighty close isn't it in and around sort of 11th and 10th mm. 9th even up to eighth, really. Danny Lee is not miles away either. There's a few drivers all separated by less than a tenth of a second. Well, I mean, even here, the two teammates, Mike Murphy and Ben Chalcraft, separated by two thousandths of a second. There's then fifteen thousandths of a second ahead to their BMW driving colleague, Christopher Smith. Danny Lee just ahead of him as well. And yeah, it's mighty, mighty close there. Bit of a gap from Van, uh, Van Bielen back to Gary Tall. Gary's in 13th place at the moment, but he actually mentioned in the uh, the Spontex CDM Esports Discord server earlier today, I think actually, no, it might have been last night, that he's, uh, he's thought he's found out what was the issue that he's been basically causing all of his wheel issues and his disconnections and technical problems all season. So he's hoping to have gotten rid of the Gremlins for tonight. He's just trying to put in the best time he can in the Spontex CDM Esports unwashed car. We send our thoughts out to Jakob Schmansky as well, his teammate, who is not going to be racing with us for the rest of the season, unfortunately. He broke his leg 
a couple of weeks ago, which is a huge shame. But we, of course, wish Jakob a speedy recovery and hope to see him back out on the circuit very soon. It's one of the other Spontex cars that's fastest, though, at the moment. Simon Povey right up at the sharp end. Completes a lap and goes on to one more just to try and improve. You can never really let off the gas, can you, Ed? Even if you're right at the top of the order, you've got to keep trying your best to improve just in case one of the guys behind you finds that little bit of magic. That's just because the level of this championship is so high that the potential for drivers to make those late improvements is always going to be there. You can never rest on your laurels, even if you are as good as Simon Povey, just because you're going to have someone breathing down your neck. And Taylor Adams sets a lap, does not improve, but should still get around for another couple of rotations at least. That's slight opting to remain in the pit, so he doesn't seem to be taking any further part in this qualifying session. Same with uh, Dean Powell, actually. Danny Lee's teammate for Danny Lee Pro Simrig hoping that his time will be good enough for fifth place and of course that James Holman in sixth place won't be able to best him or close behind actually James is Rob Sharp and Rob actually is doing very well in that Porsche slightly different livery to what I'm used to seeing in the Orberus cars a nice yeah. little tinge of purple mm. Goes very nice. He's got this lovely matte black effect on the front of the car as well. It's a different livery to what he ran at Spa, actually, last time out as well. So it's another variation on it. But Rob's always had fantastic looking race cars in the sim. So it's uh, it's lovely to see him having those variations and the little highlights. Let's not forget, though, this is a heat racing session here on iRacing. We use the heat racing system for these sprint rounds. So as soon as that clock hits zero, that yeah. is it. So people will be finishing their laps now. Rob will not get another lap after this. Neither will Peter Brill just behind him in the SRM black car. He's just coming into the hairpin. He's got Mark Johnson just behind him. Mark gets a little bit held up there, but these guys won't have time for another lap now. So we need to keep our eye on who is going to be next around. Ben Chalcraft is on a lap that he could potentially complete. Mike Murphy's just moved out of his way. I think he was trying to help his teammate somewhat but it's crunch time now you could say for better the team sorry that was poor but <laughs> they've, uh, they've got a lot of people around them that will want to uh, just complete this one lap that they're on and get it done with but with only 27 left 27 seconds left on the clock not long to do it not long at all Nils core coming up to the line and his final attempt and I don't know if he's gonna be able to go any faster seems to be the case stays fourth place at best, coming over the line now is Paul Goffin. Is there any improvement to Paul? Doesn't seem like any improvement to Danny Lee over the line. Wow, yeah. Does improve up into fifth place. Lovely lap there by Danny, leaving it right to the last moment. And, yep. well, like you say, <laughs> instantly the session has ended. No chances for the drivers to finish the laps that they are on. And instead, we get right into the action with the cars on the grid. Fantastic effort that by Simon Povey to take pole position. He'll be over the moon with that one. Uh, they also get a single championship point for taking pole position as well. So they get that only for the first round of the night. Of course, you don't get an extra point for finishing in 10th and getting reverse grid pole. That would be colossally unfair. Simon Povey takes pole position then for the second race meeting in a row. He's ahead of Taylor Adams, who's hoping to get the championship lead back tonight. Don't forget, though, with the point system in the heat racing, usually you'd get 25 points for a win, then 22, then 20 for the top three. So there's a few extra points to signify the importance of those positions. Here in the sprint races, it's simply just 20 all the way down to one in the top 20 positions, just one point per position. So if you get a win over a second place, there's only one point difference between that. So going for the win sometimes isn't always worth risking it just for that one extra point. So anyway, Simon Povey and Taylor Adams front row. Matt Slight, he'll be hoping to sort of be a bit of a rear gunner for his teammate with Nils Core in there, but Nils will be really hot on their heels. Danny Lee and James Holman make up row three ahead of Dean Powell and Rob Sharp. Good qualifying from Rob. Christopher Smith will start from ninth on the grid ahead of Mike Murphy. He completes the top ten. Ahead of Ben Chalcraft, his teammate. The two of them separated by absolutely naff all. Gary Tall will start from 12th place on the grid on the 6th row. He's ahead of Dennis Van Bielen and Paul Goffin. We then have Toby Johns and Mark Johnson on row 8, ahead of Philip Hopley and Heinz Mayer on row 9. Kim Such and John Roberts complete the top 20 drivers. We then have Andy Marston and his teammate Peter Brill for the SRM Black team. Then it's Kyle Ridley and Martin Kenyon taking to the 12th and final row of our 24-car grid. Well, I can tell you that Kyle is there. He didn't put a time in in qualifying, but he is there to take the start. 
And now the field gets underway with Simon Povey at the front of it. Seems like the McLaren's going quite well here, Ed. Three of them at the very forefront of the field, but still the mix of manufacturers right behind them. There are BMWs, Astons, Mercs and Porsches in the top ten. Yeah, definitely. It's good to see, of course, the Mercedes uh, car again that's not really favoured too kindly, doing very well up in the sixth position. Danny Lee currently in fifth place and will be starting from fifth, but he did seem to struggle a little bit in that qualifying session, not quite at the level of pace we're used to seeing. He actually finished three tenths shy of Neil's court in fourth place, such as the difference between top four and the rest of the field. Well, here we go then, round eight of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge is underway from Leden on. And, well, being Leden down to the first corner is the whole field with Simon Povey at the front of it. It's side by side for third place, though. Nils Core around the outside of Matt Slight, and he's made the move early on. That's exactly what he needed to do. Slight's going to try and look back down the inside, though. We'll filter back a little bit. Dennis Van Bieland decides he wants to cross back over the French border. And down the inside of him goes Gary Tall. Gary's actually not gained a place from that. And to the lead! Big move by Taylor Adams down the inside. There's contact there between Gary Tall and I believe Ben Chalcraft. Dennis Van Bielen's been caught up in that. We cut back to it and all oh, there's more cars off, is there? No, it's just Gary Tall trying to get out of the way. But Taylor Adams has gone straight to the front of the pack here, Ed. No hanging about, no strategy to worry about. He's overtaking Simon Povey. Yeah, and Simon seemed a little bit frustrated there. He was right on the rear end of Taylor Adams, trying to look left, trying to look right, find any way past on the exit of the corner. But Oof. Taylor did a great job of going for it. Who's that diving up the inside into Holman. the background? Holman on Danny Lee. Lovely little dive by think... James Holman. Danny Lee, I think, maybe had a little bit of contact. The car seems fine. I think it was actually Matt Slight that he sent the move oh, on there, it? you know, Ed. I think there was a big dive down the inside. Matt Slight was pushed wide because of it, and then Danny Lee benefited from it. We'll have a quick look oh. at this again. Uh, we'll find it here if I actually look in the right place. Big send down the inside by James Holman, though, this. I think, Ooh. actually, he just overcooked it, to be fair. As, oh, no, Taylor Adams is off. Taylor Adams is off. Final corner, and Taylor Adams is around. Potential championship. Well, he is a potential. No, no, he's not even potential. He is a championship protagonist, and Taylor Adams is off the road. There's Gary Toll in the touring spec GT4. What on earth has happened here to Taylor? Just overcook it a little bit, potentially coming into that final corner. Yeah. The rear just breaks away. Oh, and we man. know that that car, that McLaren, really doesn't like the compression and suspension. It hates the bumps, it hates the curbs. The drivers keep saying time and time again that you just cannot punish the corners as much as you can in other cars and I think that was just maybe the desperation to get a good run through that final corner just being his undoing and unfortunately Gary Toll just missed his breaking point a little bit there into the hairpin made a bit of a mess for the guys behind but look at that Simon Povey's gone and Holman he's driving like a madman he's absolutely sending it on these boys he and Danny Lee now with Matt Slight in there oh no there's drama further back Martin Kenyon is around and Gary Tall is also around again. That's Gary's second incident of the race. He's not had a hey, good well, start, start to this has been one. for Kyle Ridley. Isn't it just? Kyle Ridley's gained 13 places. He's up into the top 10. What an unbelievable start for Kyle Ridley. Oh, he nearly ends up back in Australia, though. He's got Toby Johns right behind him still. But wow, what a great start for him. Yeah. 13 positions. Certainly looks like it's been a busy start for him because that front 10 looks mm. slightly <laughs> crumpled. <laughs> so does. he's... He's been certainly in the thick of it. Maybe we'll have a look and see later on the race as it calms down what happened at the beginning of his race. But right now, we have to focus on Simon Povey and his advantage over Nils Core. Currently, about one and a bit seconds, nearly close to two actually, between himself and Nils. James Holman was once putting the pressure on Nils and now is feeling the pressure from Danny Lee who looks all the way around the outside, but that oh, rear end just broke no. away from Danny, and he's lost out, and he's lost it completely. He needs to get up to speed quickly uh -oh. without getting in the way of the other drivers, and now has to stay there, look at the tyres, and just reevaluate oh. his life choices that led him to this moment again. It's painful. It's the worst thing in the world, and I think he's actually just taken a little bit of a tag on the way through from Dennis Van Bielen. Yeah, Van Bielen was in the wrong place at the wrong time on lap one as well and got really unlucky. And I think he just got unlucky with Danny's rejoin there. But, wow, busy stuff. We, all, we know it. Well, we knew it was always going to mm. be with the sprint racing. I mean, it's just a different kettle of fish completely to what we get anywhere else on the calendar. This championship normally a little bit reserved almost in the way that the strategies were. But, wow, what an absolute barnstormer of a return to the championship we've had. This is the first round in the second half of the season. 
and the drivers are not holding back here. They are absolutely going for it. Taylor Adams is now recovering through the order. He's just overtaken Paul Goffin, and he has now got John Roberts in front of him. He'll be hoping to get into that top 10 and reverse the grid and benefit from it, won't he? Because if he gets 10th place, that's pole position. And we know with some of the quicker guys swapped around in that top 10, well, I was going to say he could get uh, not an easy win from there, but, I mean, with the quality of the top 10 we've got, you never know, do you? <laughs> exactly. No chance. You certainly can never count on anything. At the moment, that top 10 reverse grid is going the way of Toby Johnson. Well, sorry, Toby's been throughout the course of this season. He's only recently gotten into iRacing, hasn't he? He's been on the service for well, less than half a year, if my memory serves mm. right. And he's still able to fight up there in the top 10 for reverse grid pole positions. And it's been really great to see some drivers sort of developing on through the course of the SRM GT4 Challenge season. Huge, huge credit has to go, though, to Danny Lee after that little moment that he didn't get frustrated, he didn't let his head get the better of him and just managed to stay sort of out of the way, tried to regain the car when he realised he's been put into a position where if he reverses, he will come into the path of other drivers. Stood still, was very patient, because the first thing you want to do when you have a mistake like that is just fire up, light up the rears, spin it around and get going, but you can't do that safely with so many cars coming past. No, absolutely. It's, uh, it's an easy moment to get frustrated, like you say, and... It's ooh, another bit of contact there with Dennis Van Bielen, unfortunately. But I wanted to go back to the start, actually, and ride on board with Dennis Van Bielen and just show you how busy this start is. He was right in the thick of all of it. You've got Gary Taller, the Porsche, on the right there. It looks so much busier from a TV camera, though, on the outside when the grid's together. But when you've got the opportunity to assess just one or two cars around you here that are in your immediate vicinity, it seems so much easier. Because Dennis runs wide here. Gary gets on the right-hand side of Chalcraft. That Dennis is barely on the circuit. He's trying to use a really wide line. He's staying out of trouble. Gary just in front of us there. And you can see now Dennis is going to go to the outside line. Gary's just a little bit late on the brakes. And the two of them, as they spin, just go across the front of him. And it's so, so easy to get caught up in something like that. This mm. is Simon now chasing what was Taylor Adams at the front. Let's have a look. This is as they get down the hill. This, I love this kink down here. It's a great part of the circuit. Very Aqua Minerale esque. Yes, Imola. that's Very the sort one. Of yes. High down speed right hand kink up to a rising right hander into a left hander. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You've nailed it, Ed. It absolutely is Aqua Minerale. <laughs> that's the corner we were looking for. But you'll see here Simon and uh, Taylor using a lot of the circuit and a little bit more as well because you can get away with that here. But just watch the way the back end behaves here on Taylor's car as it bounces over this kerb. He's just going to unsettle it that little bit on the downshift. And it's so easy to do that. And I really do feel for him. I know Simon will be happy to have got the lead. He won't have wanted to get it that way. He'll, want, he'll have wanted the big fight. Mm. But it's just part and parcel of it, unfortunately. It's one of those really awkward ones as well because I can guarantee he's done so many laps around the circuit in preparation hitting that curb in all sorts of different ways and he's never had that but as soon as you get into the race you hit the curb just slightly off kilter and then that's it you can't really predict or prepare for it the rear end breaks traction on you and you're going backwards into a wall thankfully he manages to avoid any damage but still it's not in the script for a successful championship charge especially with his main rival, Nils Kaur, backing some wonderful championship points, currently 19 points on the board for Nils Kaur as it stands. Yeah, he's up into second place. He'll be very happy about that. We've got Paul Goffin and Danny Lee having a good scrap here. Danny on his recovery drive. Oh, Paul Goffin with Dennis Van Bielen planting a BMW in the back of his Porsche. Dennis has had a bit of a rough race so far, hasn't he? He'll be hoping that race two is a much simpler affair this time round. He's got Ben Chalcraft just behind him. They're both in point scoring positions, though. To be fair, Peter Brill is on his way to championship points if he can hold off Heinz Mayer. But who's going to try and upset the championship sponsors, eh? Heinz Mayer goes three around the outside, but you're in it to win it, Peter. Got to continue on. Kyle Ridley's continuing on, by the way. 14 places gained for him now, and he's in ninth position. He is having a whale of a time, is Kyle. And this will mean that he'd be second on the grid for race two. Toby Johns could potentially be on pole position if he stays where he is. And this is the thing. We do get some drivers that they don't quite fancy the sprint race evenings. They don't really want to get involved with it. Admittedly, there were a few times where there was a bit of controversy during the winter tour when we tested out this format. But since then, I think it's been tidied up. It's been really, really good. The sprint racing so far has been mega. There is a bit more contact and a bit more sort of angsty driving, let's say. But mm. it's, it's a much quicker 
rapid format, you know, the drivers have to get the job done much sooner, they don't have to think about strategy, it's just complete flat out racing and that's, you know, it's what everybody wants sometimes. So, and I think that, sorry, I was just going to say, I think the drivers are going to be glad that it's a sprint race tonight, Chas, just because of the circuit characteristics, how hard it is on the tyres. Yeah, definitely, absolutely, and one of the one of the elements I was going to mention is the fact that, yeah, sure, some of the drivers might not show up because you know they don't want that risk. They want to they want to enjoy their racing. They worry that mm. it might be a frustrating encounter compared to the usual endurance events that we do. But I mean, it gives everyone else ample opportunity to score points. You know, I, I think realistically, throwing away three points by not turning up. What's that famous phrase? You miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Yes, yeah. simple as that. Um, Taylor Adams here has 10 minutes, by the way, to catch up with Toby Johns and Kyle Ridley to potentially get himself a reverse grid pole or front row. And with no disrespect to Toby or Kyle, we know that Taylor Adams yeah. is one of the fastest drivers in the championship. He was leading the championship two rounds ago. On paper, it should be Taylor's position to take, but he's still got to do it. And the guys can have every opportunity to hold him off, and they are well within their right to do so. Definitely. I mean... If you're voting for a potential reverse grid pole, a potential race victory, if you can time it right and the drama's happening behind you. Yeah. So the drivers in 10th and 9th place are really going to fight to keep those positions. So you can talk all you like about the one lap pace difference between the drivers, but in terms of out on the race circuit, the way the racecraft might interact with one another, the way they defend, especially on this circuit here, where if you defend the inside, it's very difficult to make the move stick as we're seeing with Paul Goffin Ooh. and Ben Chalcroft. <laughs> a little bit of a scary moment there on the exit between uh, Mark Johnson, who's diving up the inside, making the move stick. Again, if you're able to defend that inside line, it's usually a pretty easy move, but look at a lovely cut back there by Ben. Nice. Sliding his way back up into a deep place, giving Paul Goffin some brief respite at the moment as, I, as we talk about the potential battle. Taylor Adams gets up the inside and gets past Toby Johns. He can now set his sights on Kyle Ridley. Yep, up in 10th place goes Taylor Adams. Great recovery so far from him, especially with crashing so early on. Well, just having a spin early on. It wasn't really a crash, was it? But, you know, having that moment early on can really upset you for the rest of the race. But he's driven well since then. He's kept his head in the game and he's back on with the charge. We've got a good battle going on here between Dean Powell and Christopher Smith. Uh, the gap is only a couple of tenths of a second. And Dean, I mean, he's been very under the radar this season, this Dean, but I tell you what, he's been a mighty strong competitor in this series so far. And just looking at the championship standings, I mean, he's ninth in the standings with 70 points. The next driver ahead of him, though, is Simon Povey. And Dean has been doing a great job battling with the likes of Matt Slight, Mike Horder even, John Barnes, Dennis Van Bielen. He's ahead of all those guys in the championship. And he's been a real big hitter in the campaign so far. And he continues to be so as well as... He now runs in fifth position, a top five for him. Uh, ben Chalcraft is now having a battle with Paul Goffin after having a fight with Mark Johnson a lap or so ago through this corner. Gives him plenty of space down the inside, then tries to cut back and get the run. John Roberts is just in front of these guys there. I think John might have just been overtaken, actually, by Dennis Van Bielen as well, so that's why he was running a little bit slow on the exit of the corner. But so much of this circuit looks the same, actually, doesn't it, Ed, when uh, we have these TV cameras? It's... A very lovely looking track though. There's a lot of movement and a lot of interesting sort of characteristics. I mean look at that shot in the background there. You yeah, could just you see can Mike just see Murphy him. going up in the background. That was gorgeous. It looked great because circuits like this have so much more character than oh I don't know, somewhere like Silverstone where it's just flat. Don't get me wrong, I love an airfield circuit, but just these tracks that are in on hills and have a bit more bumpiness to them, they're just so much more interesting in my eyes. It's also interesting with the drivers as well, isn't it? The way that it's sort of different to most other circuits that they've raced on beforehand. I mean, one of my favourite circuits is Motegi. It's a yeah. wonderful circuit that's underutilised that I think we are actually going to mm -hmm. later on this season. We so are, I would yeah. love to see how the drivers negotiate that circuit, especially with all of its elevation changes and sort of different corners that you get at other race circuits. I mean, you've got that sort of a downhill sort of into the sharp right hander that don't really get a whole lot of in the other race circuits so that's going to be exciting to see the drivers through there one thing i want to see is some excitement actually as we switch away from danny oh, lee is the <laughs> is his charge up through the field and seeing if he can maybe get that reverse grid pole position because like we said it's got toby johnson kyle ridley to catch up in the next five six minutes and you can just see them 
off in the distance. We know that Danny Lee has the pace to catch up to them, but again, as you get into the later stages of the races, maybe the defence from Toby and Carl would be slightly more fearsome. Yeah. And you can see that they only need to hold on for, say, one lap or two laps, as opposed to the several laps that they would have had to have held on against Taylor Adams. And though you did switch to another battle that's going to be potentially intriguing at the end, and that was James Holman's assault of Nils Kaur in second place. But it's not the jet assault, it's the assault from behind, isn't it? Of Matt's slight on James Holman. Yeah, Matt flying the flag here for Regenta Sim Racing in this one. He lost a couple of places at the beginning, but like I say, I think Holman sent it down the inside. There was a little bit of a touch. I know James wouldn't have meant it. He was just trying to race hard and quick in the early stage of the race, but Matt Slight still right on his tail. I was just thinking then as we were on board with Danny Lee, it's a very hard circuit to read this because even though you do have all the undulation, the fact that there is so much concrete either side of the curbs as well and the white lines, it's really difficult to spot an apex from a distance over the crests and as you go down through the bumps, I mean, the guys are using a lot of the road and seemingly outside of the white lines, a lot more of it. But just look at the way that the circuit moves down here. You can't really see an apex until you get to it. Mm. It's very, very interesting. I love the look of this place. I've not driven it before and I've not, I mean, like I say, I was supposed to commentate here in the real world on Clio Cup Europe a couple of years ago. But unfortunately, the meeting was cancelled. It was mid-COVID, so there was a lot of uncertainty around then. But what a great circuit this has proven to be. And we've not even got into the sort of main event of the night yet with our half-hour feature race. No, we haven't. You can see the way the cars bounce up and down on their way in towards Triple Gush. The triple left-hander. That's like now really closing up to James. But James is doing everything he needs to do is just drive his line and keep the pace up not to drive in his mirrors too much and worry about the car in behind, whereas Simon hasn't really had to worry about any assault from behind after the first lap. He lost out to Taylor Adams at the beginning of the race, but his consistency is what's seen him build that gap to Nils Core. And over the course of the race, he has been building that gap lap upon lap. Of course, Nils Core doesn't necessarily need to push to catch Simon because that's not who he's fighting. He's fighting car and behind Taylor Adams for the championship and can afford to just take it a little bit easier go and say 90% and just bank those points when he knows that his main rival is going to be losing yeah definitely this is almost a perfect scenario for Nils Cole right now he's going to get 19 points the second place and then he's going to start with Simon on the front well sorry on the the fifth row of the grid for race two if it continues this way but he's not got pressure from behind he doesn't have to worry about chasing a car in front and having to make a move on them that's just one extra championship point, but he's currently going to open up quite the gap. We've got Taylor Adams running in ninth place at the moment. Kyle Ridley holds on to 10th. Toby Johns is still in 11th. Danny Lee is still in 12th, but Danny will definitely be hoping for pole position as unfortunately Paul Goffin has had a moment and has gone off. He was having a battle a moment ago with Ben Chalcraft, I believe, was he not? Oh, John Roberts has had a moment in there. Whoa, Mark Johnson looks down the inside. Not quite sure what was going on there. I was watching John. No, I was watching. I mean, it looks like Mark's car sort of gets like a little bit of a like. It seems to break away from him as he turns in the car. Just sort yeah, of straight lines. Doesn't, doesn't quite it? respond. It's straight lines. So that looks like a very weird moment where he turns in the car, sort of initially grips, and then it seems to break away from him at the front. That was very strange. It also looked like John Roberts had had a moment just ahead of them as well. So. Yeah, a bit, of, uh, a bit of mayhem in the middle of the pack there. Uh, we've got a bit of a, uh, a quartet going on here, actually. We've got Dean Powell ahead of Christopher Smith, ahead of Rob Sharp, and ahead of Mike Murphy. Uh, four different cars. Uh, sorry, no, there's two BMWs, isn't there? But four very different cars still in terms of the colour schemes anyway. All chasing one another, but not really in sort of striking distance of each other at this stage. I imagine it's quite a difficult circuit to follow on as well because there's no real straight parts to it. It's all apex this way, apex that way, bump this way and rise and fall, you know. You've got to be really switched on. Yeah, just watching as well for where Danny Lee is on the circuit. He's just had a purple first sector and he's put his personal best in for the race, chasing down. That reverse grid pole position currently in 12th place but really starting to hound the rear end of Toby Johns as they make their way over the crest and then start finish straight now there is Simon Pogue because that just happens how many laps they will have to battle together definitely does not long to go now just a minute left of the race Simon is nearly halfway around a lap though so I reckon 
that we are going to get one more mm. after this. I don't think he'll have had the white flag yet. So Simon will be pushing like mad. He's not going to be thinking about how long's left. They don't need to worry about it in this part of the championship because with the sprint races, they have enough fuel to get to the end of these races. And that is that. It's all on the fixed setups that we've been running, which has been what's known as the sprint fixed setup, which is basically for the IMSA sprint races that the GT4 cars do. It used to be called IMSA PC on iRacing, but it's been called the sprint fix for a while now. And it's based on that, but with the, uh, the fuel basically turned up to 60% so that they can definitely make it through a half-hour race and a 20-minute race. So, Simon Povey's come around the final corner to start the last lap. Matt Slight is absolutely hounding the back of James Holman, though, to try and get that podium position here, Ed. He really is going for it, but he's not going to be the only one. Up and down the field, drivers try to make their way through various different points, of course. We know that there's only going to be one point difference for Matt Slight if he finishes ahead of James Holman, so... It might be worth just banking some points and not risking anything. As you mentioned at the start of the broadcast, it's all about being nice and cautious in the first race of the evening. But I don't think there's any room for caution or care in Danny Lee's case, is he? Because he's really putting the pressure on Toby Johns for that reverse grip opposition. Look at him trying to throw him off, looking up the inside. And now with the overspeed, trying to round the outside. And just again, maybe catching Toby Johns a little bit too quickly is what's happened with Kim Such. He's had a moment. Currently in the last point scoring position, there might have been some coming together with another Porsche. Yeah, he's had a uh, big moment at the bottom of the hill. We're just going to quickly look back at it and just catch what's happened here. Oh, no. He's oh, he's just come to a stop and he's just spun it on the inside. And then oh. I think he's tried to then get it out, but he's had to do a bit of an Austin Powers in there, unfortunately. But the timer has clicked down to zero and is <laughs> strangely going 0 one, zero, 1 on my screen all the time. But somebody that's gone two for two in the last two races of the championship has been this man. Simon Povey returns and does another absolutely cracking job. Povey wins, gets 20 points on the board, maximum points for the first round of the night. Nils Kaur, great result for him. He'll be over the moon with that. And James Holman is just going to beat Matt Slide to the line. And Dean Powell is also just going to beat Christopher Smith to the line as well. Rob Sharp, welcome back to the points, my friend. Mike Murphy next up. And Taylor Adams is going to start on the front row for race two in the night. That's going to be oh so important for him. He'll be happy that he's at least recovered to there, but gutted about the mistake earlier on. Kyle Ridley is going to get pole position. And Danny Lee is not going to get the better of Toby Johns. Well done to Toby. Great drive and great points for him. Danny Lee finishes in 12th place. Wow, what a race that was, though, Ed. Very, very busy all the way through. We've got more cars finishing, though. Dennis Van Bielen next up. Philip Hopley finishing in 14th for some good points as well. Yeah, plenty of drivers getting some good points. And that's what you said. You, drivers that don't take part in these sprint races are just throwing away free points to maybe some of their championship rivals, like Sir Paul Goffin, Gary Tall, Heidsmeyer bagging some points. Even Mark Johnson as well for Legends Racing. All up and down the field, drivers scoring some points against their rivals that might not be showing up tonight. Yeah, definitely. In it to win it. You have to be in it to win it, everybody. Mm -hmm. But as we've seen, Simon Povey takes the first win of the evening. Don't forget two races here tonight on Chance Draycott Media in the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. Another thanks as well to our wonderful sponsors, Oris Digital, Crockery Direct, Derbyshire Holiday Homes and Bespoke Shelters. Chance Draycott and Ed May up here in the commentary box for this amazing championship. It's so much fun to run this and commentate and broadcast and all sorts. But let's have a look, shall we, at the results of the first race of the night. We have a warm-up session that I can never remember the length of. But what we're going to do is have a look at the results from race one. So, Simon Povey takes another win. He won at Spa, and he wins here in France. He'll be over the moon with that. Nils Kaur finishes in second. That is oh so important for him to take those championship points. James Holman gets a podium. He'll be pleased with that as well in the Mercedes. He's probably done about two laps practice before tonight. We've then got Matt Slight in fourth position ahead of Dean Powell. Those two having a really strong run of their own with Christopher Smith in sixth place. Rob Sharp was next up ahead of Mike Murphy with Taylor Adams and Kyle Ridley. What a great drive by Kyle from right near the back of the grid in 23rd, finishing inside the top 10. That puts him on pole as well. What a boy. Toby John's 11th. Great drive by Toby. Unfortunately, just misses out on pole. Danny Lee will finish the race in 12th position. He's ahead of Dennis Van Bielen. Philip Hopley gets some big points, as we said. Ben Chalcraft recovers from a bit of a battering encounter with John Roberts in 16th. He was just ahead of Mark Johnson and Paul Goffin after their shenanigans a little bit later on in the race. Then we had Gary Tall 19th and Heinz Mayer completing the point scorers 
Kim Such was next up, ahead of Martin Kenyon and Peter Brill, and the only non-finisher in the race, Andy Marston, the boss man in the McLaren. Porsche, not McLaren. <laughs> Well, welcome back, Ed. <laughs> Straight into the deep end with that one. Very lively race, isn't it, in this sprint race? And it's great fun. Yeah, it is. It's been wonderful to see. And they've really given me a great welcome back race to sink my teeth into. And it's been just action packed from start to finish, as it often is in the Sim Racer Magazine GT4 Challenge. Interestingly enough, Simon Povey looked pretty comfortable, didn't he, in that first race? Do you maybe think that he could do the double? get race one and race two under his belt. Uh, this circuit's going to be very difficult to overtake around unless you go really ham like James Holman did at the beginning of that one. So I'm not really sure. We'll have to wait and see and, uh, and find out. Keep our eye on it. It's all about mm. taking it easy in the opening laps, though. But what Ed and I are going to do very quickly, everybody, is just take a quick break here on Chaz Draycott Media. Just make sure we ourselves are fueled up, hydrated, and ready to go for the second race of the night. And we will be right back with you. We'll see you in a few.
Hello again everybody, Chaz Dracott and Ed May here for the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge and we are coming into round 9 of the championship. We just saw round 8 which was the first of the two sprint races here tonight at Circuit Lednon in France or Ledenon as some of them say. It's an amazing circuit this Ed isn't it, it's really captured our hearts already. Very busy first sprint race of the night, one of the big moments of the championship with Taylor Adams having a spin. There's lots to think about, lots to talk about here. Yeah, it was a big, big, dramatic moment for Taylor Adams, of course, losing the rear end after being in the lead of the race and looking to try and inverse that championship position. He finds himself trying to get one over on his main rival, Nils Core. However, Nils played a much more sensible game, kept himself out of trouble, and then made some great points for second place. Nils will line up in... Well, ninth position with Simon Povey alongside him in 10th at the fifth row of the grid. Of course, that works out quite well for Nils because he will be on the left-hand side of the circuit going into turn one, which is basically three left-handers. Yep, absolutely. He's in the perfect place for it. So it's going to be an exciting start to the race, this one. I'm really looking forward to it. It was an amazing start anyway to the last one, to be honest. It's been mm. a great, great night of it, to be honest, so far. We look forward to seeing how everybody gets on in the uh, the second iteration of the evening. But a half-hour race this time, Ed, rather than 20 minutes. Circuit's temperature hasn't really increased. Apparently, it's uh, the static weather is on. That's why, basically, because of the new weather system that iRacing has, uh, I'd gone for basically the default weather, not knowing that that actually defaulted it to static weather. So that's why the time isn't progressing. It's just staying exactly as is, rather than having the clouds move and any sort of change on the surface, which is a shame. But that's my bad, and the drivers have pointed it out in the Discord. So I do apologise, but... Yeah, they, uh, they don't have to worry about increasing track temperatures or anything tonight. 28 degrees is actually pretty tasty, isn't it? That's right in the good ballpark for the tyres to get up to a good temperature, but not cook to death. Yeah, it's going to be very tricky for the drivers to manage that because you can't really afford to give the tyres any rest because you need them for each and every corner. Mm. And there aren't really any sort of slower corners where you can take it easier. It's all pretty much medium and high speed. Absolutely is. circuit. So Rob Sharp there just pulling over to the side of the circuit. Everyone will disappear just now and listen. Birds chirping. Bit of silence in the French countryside for just a moment. Jakob Schmanski actually saying, how is the French countryside the countryside treating two Englishmen this fine rainy evening? Uh, it's treating us just as well as it could do, to be honest with you, <laughs> Jakob. Uh, Kyle Ridley, though, he's been treated well to it. He's on pole position for race two with Taylor Adams alongside him. Mike Murphy and Rob Sharp make up a very interesting second row of the grid. They could definitely be a threat from there. Christopher Smith and Dean Powell make up row three. Matt Slight lines up alongside James Holman on row four. Then it's Nils Kaur and Simon Povey, the inseparable duo on row five. Then it's Toby Johnson, Danny Lee, where they finished in 11th and 12th. Ahead of Dennis Van Bielen, Philip Hopley, Ben Chalcraft, John Roberts, Mark Johnson, Paul Goffin, Gary Tall, Heinz Mayer, Kim Such, Martin Kenyon, Peter Brill and Andy Marston. The boss man starts 24th on the grid for the second race of the night. We're in for an absolute treat of an encounter here, Ed. But to be honest, I think there's going to be a lot of people here, especially inside this top 10, that want to make moves early on here. And we saw that James Holman was not one to hang about in that first race. Do you reckon we're going to see more big overtakes from him to begin with? Um, well, you'd hope so, wouldn't you? You'd add some more drama and spice into the mix. I certainly think that Simon and Nils will hope so because that could easily pa pave the way for them to pick up the scraps and make some positions themselves without having to do much work. But out in front, Carl Ridley is going to get the race underway. He absolutely is. Up over the crest of the hill and from Circuit de la Dénon for the second time tonight. Round 9 of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge gets underway and our bright and beautiful colourful grid screams across the start-finish line. And what a great start that is by Kyle Ridley. Gets an advantage over Taylor Adams straight off the bat. And Nils Kaur trying to use the inside line to his advantage. Rob Sharp's run a little bit wide in there as well. Christopher Smith nearly had contact with Dean Powell as a bit of a brush from the back of the Porsche and Holman well we mentioned him earlier he's gone around at turn two already oh dear what's happened here he just seemed to maybe got too much involved into the thick of it as out in front it's side by side between Carl Ridley and Taylor Adams Taylor looking all the way around the outside oh. for the race victory and there was a little bit of a I think a slight bit of contact on the exit but they both kept going Mike Murphy fancies a piece of the action as well as we look at the tail end <laughs> of the field. Look at them all getting involved. 
and actually out in front, Taylor Adams does make the move. Oh no, on Taylor! Ridley, but has he done it again? Taylor loses the rear end of the McLaren for the second time tonight from the race lead. Dean Powell and Danny Lee have swapped places. Danny's moved up into fifth place already from 12th on the grid. He's had an amazing start. Seven places for him gained. Matt Slight side by side with Povey. Rob Sharp's involved and there's three cars on the exit. On the apex, I should say. Toby Johns was almost involved in that. I think he had to stop to get out of the way. Rob Sharp is around. I think he just understeered into the side of Simon, to be honest with you. But then they both recovered. Kyle Ridley now leads the race. It's BMWs everywhere. Look at that. One, two, three, four beamers at the front. And Danny Lee, what a start he's had making up for that first race in great fashion as he's now battling with championship leader Nils Kaur again trying to find a way around the outside you lose so much time on the right hand side of the circuit going through those left hands it's dirty there's some gravel dust that's been kicked up and it's just not really conducive to making up quick positions as look at that on the inside Mike Murphy on Christopher Smith Christopher Smith now needs to worry about Nils Kaur and behind who fancies an extra position thinks better of it of course a little bit deep into the corner goes Chris, but manages to recover. And out in front, Mike Murphy, he's going for the race lead on Cull Ridley. Looked like he was side by side. We could just about see him for a moment there as they go down the hill. Ridley's going to have the inside line for this bit. And now Christopher Smith's going to look down the inside of him. God, I can't even think of where to look. Can't look at any replays or anything at any point at the moment. As down the inside, Christopher Smith's taking the position. There's a tiny bit of an overlap, though, to Mike Murphy. So they need to be careful through the left-hander. Through here, there's contact oh, with Danny oh. Lee and Nils Kaur. Nils Kaur continues on, but Danny Lee's off and sideways and into the gravel. Oh, Danny will be gutted about that. I'm not sure if there was some net code or something involved. iRacing's done a real big update, actually, for the net code recently, and they've really done a good job on it, to be fair to them. So I'm not sure if there was any of that... Well, not necessary, sorry, but, you know, associated with that, let's say. But Kyle Ridley, the Australian, continues to lead the race from Christopher Smith and Mike Murphy. It's still an old BMW podium. Let's have a look, though, at what happened just there to Danny Lee they come up over the top of the hill oh there was a Ooh. lot of net code a lot of it unfortunately after what I just said there was a good sort of foot between the two cars and I want to see also what happened to James Holman let's go back to the start then Ed let's try and pick this apart bit by bit shall we let's go on the good old chopper cam <laughs> here we go so it gives a good overview of everything that's been going on so this is James Holman Ooh. he had strife at the start of the race the on the right hand side of the circuit in that Mercedes, very distinctive pink roof, all the way around the outside, and then just the car oh. seems to break away from him. It's all by himself. Turns yeah. into the corner. It has a little bit of a wiggle, and then that sort of kick starts. A few of the drivers having incidents in sympathy. Mark Johnson had a coming together. I think that was with Philip Hopley, and then another coming together. Looked like was that Heinz Meyer, and then Kim Such as well. And Kim Such, all of them just coming together. Start of the race. This was out in front, I think. This was yep. Taylor Adams battling away with Carl Ridley. Well, Kyle's car got Gets sideways there. Better of him. Again, over the bump. Seems fine for now. Going through the right hander. And as soon as he gets in the lead, he loses it yet again. Unbelievable stuff. One way, then the other. This is Matt Slight side by side with Simon Povey. He then had an incident with Rob Sharp. I think Rob understeered into him. Simon tries to squeeze Matt to the apex. Rob oh, just goes a little bit too hot into the corner, fills that gap in the middle. Toby Johns, to be fair, does a great job there. Ben Chalcraft avoiding that as well. My goodness me, what a busy start to the race once again here at Lidnan. But they continue on, and Kyle Ridley still at the front of this field. But for how long? Because here comes Christopher Smith down the inside. Well, round the outside, sorry. I forget what part of the circuit they're on. It all looks the same. They've got Matt Slight in there right behind Mike Murphy. Nils Kaur somehow still in that as well. Dean Powell involved. My, this is fantastic racing. What great entertainment. As Matt Slight sends it up the inside of Mike Murphy. Nils Kaur wants a piece of that as well. They're still side by side as they go back down the hill. It's Beamer versus McLaren. It's going to feel like he's in a very small car for Matt Slight, isn't it? At this point, he's racing tower blocks with rear wings. And he's just about scooped it around the outside. Great move that by Matt Slight. Real yeah. commitment. We've seen that from him before, though, haven't we? Great stuff. Matt Slight needs to do exactly this. It's just race hard, try and cause a little bit of uneasiness for Nils core. Nils is going to be happy to stay in fifth place and bank yet more points against Matt Slate's teammate and of course his championship rival in Taylor Adams but can't afford to you know properly race Nils core hard and put him into an accident but he can put him into positions where he doesn't want to be in in the midst of some two wide moments some 
battles there and Boston was caught. Oh. Uh, be careful, oh. look at this, just squeezing his way through about a BMW's width. Don't gap like for it. <laughs> Christopher Smith. Uh, but look at Carla Ridley carrying the momentum around oh. the outside. Stop well it. held, that's a great move. Look at how close they are to contact, but it's a great. I know. <laughs> advert for the quality of racing that we get at SRM GT4 Challenge. I mean, you're oh. just having kittens at the moment. <laughs> Again, every time they get close together, it's like them sort of the uh, parking sensors in the rear oh, no. beep, 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 beep. You're just a personal one of them for all the drivers. Just making a little noise whenever it gets too close for comfort. Is looking up the inside. Oh no, oh, no there is contact. Nils caught having a coming together. And, oh, oh no! Oh, massive crunch. Spit across the face of the circuit. That's Mike Murphy. Big, big damage to the front of his BMW there. Dean Powell as well involved. Matt Slight, there's a car park on the exit of the corner. And Rob Sharp drives through the middle of it, says thanks very much, boys. Whoa, Whoa the car's not driving straight. Dean no. Powell is going to have to tow back to the pits, uh, unless he's confident that there's no one going to be in behind. But look at that that's right yeah. front. Completely crunched in. So it started, Matt Slight went into Hart. Povey then hits Slight. Powell goes across, hits Murphy. Povey then gets another hit. Goodness me, there was so much going on there. Let's just have a look at this again. So we'll go from Matt Slight. So Matt had a wiggle on the exit, and then Nils gets past him. Matt tries to keep it on the inside of the corner, but he's just gone in way too hot. Bounces off the front of Nils. Then just let, there's a lot goes on here, so let's figure this out. So Dean Powell then hits the side of Matt Slight, straightens him up. Simon then just goes straight into the back of him. Dean Powell then gets turned across the front, across Mike Murphy, who then gets hit by Dennis Van Beelen as well. Then watch Simon Povey, because he gets a hit off Van Beelen, somehow survives it, and then just continues on from there. Yeah. John Robertson, and by the way, he's gained 10 places. <laughs> he's had a belt over race. Gary Tall behind him's gained 12. What a run these boys are having. And Toby Johns for a top 10 position as he's currently side by side with Gary Tall and up into seventh place. Wonderful stuff from Toby. Just shows that keeping himself out of trouble can bank you some really strong championship points. I think this is going to be Toby's best finish of the season. It will be. If it stands as is. We'll have a look. Christopher Smith and Carl Ridley oh, battling away. Me. Lovely shot there. The car's going into the hairpin. Making their way out. Wonderful stuff. This Carl Ridley has now been overtaken by Nils Core. Nils could be on track for the race victory here because we've got still 20 minutes to go in this race. We wouldn't believe it from the amount of action we've had. That could easily <laughs> fill an hour's worth of running, but they've condensed it down to just 10 minutes. Simon Povey as well. Let's not count him out just yet. He is well within the chance of winning this race. Only three seconds back from race leader Christopher Smith. And just about being able to catch our breath, but oh, there's still action boys. going on. Never mind, to speak too soon. Gary Till banging doors with James Holman in towards turn one. Fast left hander, so close to contact, giving each other just enough racing room. Watching, of course, the Minardi car, Ben Chalkoff waiting in the wings, but no scraps to pick up. Just behind them, Taylor Adams as well, wanting a piece of this. He's watching the BMW try and have a go down the inside, wants to get a cutback. There's a horrible bump on the middle of that hairpin, actually, at the bottom of the hill. And then on the exit as well, so many chances for it to upset the car. Taylor Adams back down the inside of Ben Chalcraft. Lovely move. Ben gives him all the room in the world. Fair play, fair racing. And they continue on. Gary Toll still gained 10 places in this race. John Roberts started 16th on the grid. He's up into 6. He's having a really strong run. Great stuff. And... Again, it's just survival instincts at the moment, I think, get you through these races. There are still guys further down. Rob Sharp, Matt Slight, Mike Murphy, they've all been involved in incidents, but they will still score points if they finish where they are. Christopher Smith, though, currently leading this race with Nils Core behind him. Same machine on same setup. Same goes for Kyle Ridley as well. Three BMWs all on the podium at the moment. And if Christopher can hang on and fend off Nils Core, which is easier said than done regardless of who you are, he could be on for his first ever SRM win. Good, Chris. And he's a driver that's very well deserving of it, you know, Ed. I mean, we've, we've seen some great things from Chris. He's been the mastermind of a lot of strategies in the GT4 Challenge before for RD Simsport. He's a lovely lad as well, always gives a great interview. I'd love to see him win a race, to be honest with you. There's no bias up here in the commentary box, but it would be good to see him get a triumph in one way or another. Yeah, definitely. And, of course, there are things outside of this evening that oh, could no. have an effect on oh dear Taylor Adams again having a moment and is that Gary Tall once more in the mix 
of an incident is Ben Chalcroft. We'll have a look here. He gets a great view of all of this. Just slides on through, lets the two of them tangle. Ooh, careful. Well judged to get on the brakes quickly between Gary Tall and yeah. Taylor Adams. That's slight as well. It shows the issues that Regenta Sim Racing have, that they are both together on the circuit, but in 15th and 16th place. Yeah, they Not were... an evening for Regenta Sim Racing to look back on fondly. Especially not for the team's championship as well, when you consider that their main rivals, RD Simsport, have cars both inside the top 10 of this race right now. And it's just, it looked like a little bit of, I don't want to use the word desperation because it's not desperation from these guys. That's not how they drive, but it was a little bit too much urgency from them. They were really trying to send it at every opportunity to try and get up the order quickly and it's not paid off for them. You know, we've, we've mentioned that sometimes the drivers do have to adopt a bit more of an aggressive style in this sort of racing and they do have to really th throw it down the inside and send it, but they just harm themselves there more than anything in those moments and they will continue on they will push to recover from that but it's just not worked out for them at the moment so fingers yeah. crossed that they get a bit more level headed as this race goes on I can't really say that it's going to be easy for mm. uh, this man to do that as Simon Povey gets up to third place by the way James Holman's just overtaken John Roberts as well yeah so as I was about to say before we got distracted by other moments and accidents here and there I was going to say there were things outside of this evening that might affect Oh, Ooh, never mind. I was going to say there were things outside this evening that would have did potentially Christmas is taking his first race victory with Nils Core, maybe playing it safer. But no, Nils Core takes a chance, sees a gap up the inside and dives up into first place. Simon Povey now is closing in on the pair of them. So I know we said just before we went on our break about Simon Povey potentially getting two wins in one evening's worth of racing. Maybe Nils Core will be taking top honours tonight with a lovely little move up the inside and 17 minutes still to go in this race. Mm. Could build a bit of a gap. Let's not forget the whole first race is 20 minutes long as well, so mm. there's still plenty of time for things to uh, to progress here. A quick reminder as well that the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge is sponsored by the wonderful people at Oris Digital, Crockery Direct, Derbyshire Holiday Homes and Bespoke Shelters. Boy, doesn't Chad sound like an American broadcaster. But the, those guys are all lovely, lovely people. Heinz Mayer in particular is the man behind Oris Digital and Crockery Direct. Always gives us a fantastic, fantastic amount of support. And, of course, gives us the medals and certificates and chocolates and bubbly for the drivers based on their prizes for many different things. Top three in each race, safest driver of the race, move of the race as well, and championship finishing positions too. He is an amazing supporter, and his brother Ralph as well, who we miss out there on the circuit tonight. Ralph is actually down in South Africa at the moment, I believe, so it's a shame not to uh, have Ralph there, but we hope he is well. We hope the family are well as well. And it's great to still at least have one of them at a time on the circuit, because, to be fair, I think uh, Ryan Penny isn't out on track tonight, but I think he'd be grateful to see that both of them were around, because there used to be a Ryan Penny sandwich with the, uh, a very Heinz Mayer and Ralph Mayer bread, wasn't there, every single time in the first few seasons. Ryan couldn't get away from them. No, he really couldn't, and it was always the Myers together on the circuit with him. It was never one or the other, it was both of them at the same time. So it was great to have that, but of course, Shane and Dad have both of them out on the circuit, it finishing, well, one position apart from each other. Again, difficult <laughs> to separate the two of them. Out in front, we've got a little bit of separation between Kyle Rudley and this man, Dennis Van Bielen. About four seconds the gap from fourth to fifth. Dennis with James Holman in behind him and James after the tricky start to his race has seemingly come through relatively strongly hasn't he since then yeah, he's been gone. his head down and staying I'm gone. out of the way and that's just because so many other people have had moments in this race that he's been just able to make those positions back well, I'm, I'm just going to do something hang on I'm just making sure I'm, I'm, I'm watching that black and pink Merc here I wasn't daydreaming that he spun at turn one, was I? No, he did spin, he, but he, obviously he but seemed to get the back same, up into... that's the same Mercedes that now sits yeah. in sixth place in this race. Let's just see how many cars go past him here. Oh, yeah, all of them. <laughs> like, <laughs> how on earth, James? <laughs> I mean, I do blow quite a lot of smoke up James's backside when I commentate on him, but my God, man. <laughs> and he's only eight seconds off the lead, <laughs> Amazing, yeah. amazing. Danny Lee as well, another driver that we've got yeah. showing a lot of for a very similar reason. Had that a little bit later on in the race as well, actually, when the field was slightly more spread. Mm. 
Still lost out a lot, but back up into eighth place. Amazing stuff. Toby John's still running in ninth. He's having a brilliant night so far. Drew Fletcher in the chat as well. Drew will be very invested in that. He actually got Alex and Toby into sim racing as well and helped them find their feet. Good to see you though, Drew. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Drew and I actually recorded a YouTube video not long ago on uh, on Flight Simulator and had an absolute riot. That'll be on my YouTube channel in a couple of weeks. And it's a very funny one, and I really do urge that you watch it. Even if it's not your usual tipple, it's just two blokes having a laugh in a plane. It's very funny. Dennis Van Bielen has been overtaken by James Holman. He's not fighting that one too hard at the moment, though, because he knows that James is on a real charge here, Ed. He's certainly moving quickly, but we're only just over the halfway point of this race yet, so plenty more still to change. Yeah, a little more could change with Lewis Court. We were saying that he was going to try and break away from Christopher Smith, but actually no. the opposite <laughs> has happened. Chris Smith has stayed close to him and actually closed that gap down on the last couple of laps. Oh, have you seen who's behind him? Kofi as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, gonna he's say, waiting in the wings. I'd the, leg it. <laughs> the Pink Panther is prowling around the French countryside, hungry for a second race victory. It's a lovely little livery he's got on now. Thank you. Not quite the bright gold machine, but still. <laughs> no. Very nice. Lovely pink Spontex machine. Indeed, yeah. Simon uh, scoured the internet, let's say, to uh, to find a product that Spontex did with pink packaging on it, just so he could try and convince me to do a livery for him. And his wish was my command. Or my, sorry, yeah, is it that way around? Yeah, his wish was my command. But, uh, it happened. But anyway, great run so far for Christopher Smith, to be fair to him. He's having a really strong run. Let's not forget, he started fifth on the grid here, so it wasn't even like he was at the front and just sort of held on. He had to make his way forward in the opening laps and put some moves in of his own. And he remains up there for the time being. Top three, broken away a little bit from Kyle Ridley, but Kyle will be a happy boy as well, to be fair. He's always a lovely lad to speak to when we interview him, but he'll be even happier at this point. He's benefited quite well from both of the sprint race evenings so far. He started near the back of the grid at the Red Bull Ring, if I remember rightly, then got put on a reverse grid pole and held his ground inside the top ten. So he's definitely a driver that has used this advantage, or sorry, used this format to his advantage. We have Danny Lee here, who don't forget is streaming his own point of view tonight. So if you'd like to see an entire night's worth of racing from a driver's perspective, there are a number of drivers in the championship that do stream it. Danny has quite the, uh, the high profile YouTube channel and he's got a great amount of followers that join in his ventures. He's done a great amount for exposing the championship as well, not in a bad way. And we're not talking, you know, like Red Bull scandal sort of way. We're talking like, He's given great exposure to the championship, let's say. That's that's better wording for it. Well, he's currently trying to uh, uncover the back of John Roberts' beautiful Mercedes-AMG GT4 at this minute. And John is, well, he's a hardy defender. Is John. I've raced against him for nearly 10 years now. And he's always firm but fair, is John. And to be fair, he's having a good night of his own up in seventh place. Yeah, he certainly is. I mean, Danny Lee is looking to get a good run out of the final corner over the hill and he's certainly close but maybe not close enough to make a move up the inside in towards Taiwan. He has a little look at oh, the inside he does that, trying to he? throw him off. <laughs> he does love the little the Danny Lee look, I think we need to call it. Danny Lee fake. A little cheeky <laughs> yeah, cheeky peek up the inside but no real intent to make any any move stick. Ooh. I think we might see some <laughs> intent later on in the race though from Simon Povey who is close to the rear end of Christopher Smith just looking through he could start to erupt into action further in front Taylor Adams in the midst of a battle he's got Paul Goffin in front but we're looking back at Mark Johnson that very lovely legends racing Aston Martin of course uh, Aston Martin a car that I'm very very fond of of course it's having raced behind the wheel of it in the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge before. It's a car that I thought would do quite well around this circuit, but it seems that not really many of the drivers have quite had that same fortune a lot of the time. It's been mm. sort of involved in incidents, though, rather yeah. than sort of struggling for pace. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that car in there is Dean Powell, by the way, who's in there with them. Uh, the car behind Mark Johnson in terms of racing positions is actually Matt Slight, who's just there. But Dean is a lap down at the moment and in the uh, in the thick of that battle. And yeah, the top three, though, only separated at the moment by about 1.1 seconds. Nils Core is only seven tenths of a second ahead of Christopher Smith. He's then only, well, he's less than half a second ahead of Simon Povey. So these guys are mighty close together. But we know what Chris is like. His pace is absolutely phenomenal, to be fair to him. He doesn't always qualify right at the sharp end. He's always in the top ten. But when it comes to actually just 
getting the car around safely and just having a great consistent race Christopher is if you were doing like a dream team or a sort of team manager thing you would pick Chris because he just churns out the laps and he's so good at it he just knows where to manage the race and, and how to sort of just nurse the car to the end and I think these sprint race formats are really really good for him as well because he can do that without having to worry about a fuel strategy yeah, he certainly can. It's all about just full track until the end in these sprints. But looking at Simon Povey now, is he really looking for a move through on Christmas with, or is he happy just to sit in and get another podium on the board? Because, of mm. course, he has missed a few rounds, but his championship position isn't, you know, out of the question of getting a good result come the end if he's able to make the rest of the season. Yeah. Very true. Very true. We've changed the camera angle in the McLaren now, so it doesn't feel like you're sat in the roof. So you can actually see some more of uh, what's in front of us. And as you can see, it's the two postcodes on wheels that are the BMW M4 GT4. But Simon just doing enough, isn't he, at the moment? He's just sufficiently with these guys. He's not overdoing it. He's not completely sending it. He's getting close to the back of Christopher Smith and sending a bit of a message here and there. But it's nothing over the top, is it? It's really just consistent chasing. Yeah, and with not a huge amount of time left to go in this race. How long is there? There's less than eight minutes remaining. Simon might start to get a bit of a move on and try and take Christopher Smith. But it's going to be a lot harder because Christopher Smith is going to be getting that slipstream help from Niels core in front. And that's going to be something that will make it all the more harder for Simon to make that move stick. Just looking back here from Toby Johns, by the way, Ben Chalcraft. Toby's really been holding his ground well here. He's under a lot of pressure, pressure from Ben. We know Ben is one of the quick drivers in the series as well. He's been doing a great job with his teammate Mike. They've been such a wonderful addition. You know, I, I'm good friends with the guys before they started this from the world of circuit superstars, but they really have taken to this like a duck to water, haven't they, from the endurance events onwards. It's, oh, no. Toby just didn't realise that Ben was down the inside there, I don't think, as Taylor Adams says, all right then, boys, cheers. I'll, uh, I'll take a freebie on that. Oh, very close side by side into the final corner. Great opportunism that by Taylor Adams. That's the exact place and time you want to be in, isn't it, when there's a battle in front of you? And now he might even have a run on Toby down the start finish stroke. Yeah, he's got a lovely little run. He's going to look to the inside here, I think. Toby, I don't think he's too eager to fight this. You can see the brake lights flashing for a moment as he's going all the way around the outside. You think he's realised that Taylor's going to have the pace on him. So instead, look to let him through and then you that McLaren to drag him along essentially and give him extra slipstream, extra few kilometers now to defend from Ben Chowcraft in behind. It's ben Ooh, now as I say that, down Ben's the inside. Oh. Again, trying it. <laughs> Looked like there was a bit of a touch on the exit there and well, Toby is defending hard, but I'd say fair at the moment. He maybe squeezed him a little bit more than he needed to on the apex earlier, but I just don't think that he knew he was down the inside. Uh, we've got a battle on for the final point scoring place, by the way. Kim Such is holding on to 19th with Martin Kenyon, and then Rob Sharp wants that final championship point for 20th position at the moment. So these guys we need to keep our eye on as the laps count down. Kim's actually defending to the inside line from Martin. Rob has a quick look now as well. He wants to take that tighter line on the exit, but... Then Martin is going to be the one on the inside line for the next part of the circuit. Roberts has been displaced now by Taylor Adams. Toby Johns wants a bit of this action too. So Toby goes from being the defender to being the attacker. Great racing tonight though. Honestly, this, the, the, one of the best things about these sprint formats is that we, it does shake up the order very easily compared to what we're used to in the endurance events that we run, the one-hour endurance races. So you never know who's going to be battling who and you do see drivers battling other drivers that they normally wouldn't be in the endurance events so you know everyone's a bit out of their comfort zone and yeah there may be a complaint or two at the end of the night about it and if there's an incident because people aren't used to racing others and you know there's always a bit of a pace spread through a field but it's just exciting to watch because it's so much more unpredictable and it still affects the championship at the end of the day it's you know you've got to be in it to win it haven't you you've got to play the game you do you've got to be smart about things and a lot of time the smartest drivers are the ones that are also well enough the quickest and the ones more likely to get those race victories. I was watching Simon Pope here and the way that he's approaching this late stage of the race. We know he's going to be hungry for that race victory. It's just the way he's approaching this sort of last sector and seeing where he can set himself up. But at the moment, it just seems to be coming away from him. Chris Smith in his BMW, very strong through there. And basically the gap that Simon Pope 
brings down through the first half of the lap just seems to vanish when we get to the start finish line. Yeah, it's strange, isn't it, how it's varying so much. We'll go back to this, though, because Ben Chalcraft is still trying to get past Toby Johns, is still trying to get past John Roberts at this moment. It's a great battle. Mercedes versus McLaren versus BMW. And look at that. Toby's got the run on the exit. John's gone wide out of the final corner. Toby Johns moved himself up into ninth position, even further inside that top ten. And Ben's trying to French fry his way down the inside into turns, well, effectively turns one, two, and three, aren't they? All of the, uh, the kinks to the left. But still, John carries great pace around the outside and then cuts across to the apex, demanding stuff. Like I said earlier, hard but fair from John Roberts. There was no overlap there. He didn't really put Ben too deeply out of position. Go back to this for the final championship point. Rob Sharp in 21st place, trying to get into that top 20. Every championship point matters, and Rob will want that because he had that spin earlier on. He'll want at least a point for his troubles this evening. Unfortunately, Andy Marston is out of the race after just two laps, I've only just noticed. So mm. Peter Brill and Dean Powell still going. So we've still got 23 of the 24 cars going. And another question for you, Ed. Where the hell has the last 20 minutes gone? <laughs> I have no I mean, even, idea. Even the last 10. I mean, I said earlier that we'd gone past halfway and we had 13 minutes left. We've got less than three minutes to go now. It's just disappeared. Or just evaporated into thin air watching these guys battle it out lap after lap. It's been wonderful to see, isn't it? Nils called Chris was in Simon Povey. A three-way fight for the end of the race out in front as Ben Chalcraft is seemingly in the midst of yet more action. He seems to be attracting it everywhere he goes on the craft in this race. Mm. Currently got Matt Slight as well, who's been attracting all sorts of attention for the sadly unfortunate reasons of mm. being involved in incidents and accidents. Gets ahead of John Roberts, who's seemingly struggling at the moment. It's getting out of that final corner. Can't quite get, get the run, making mistakes, and it's seen him drop way, way back, hasn't he, over the past few laps? Yeah, I think he, he's been put out of position once by maybe a bit of contact or somebody making a move, and then it's just knocked him down a peg a bit by bit because the field was so evenly spread out. As soon as one driver got past you, you were then less than a second ahead of the car behind. They got a bit confident and then caught up. There's been a few, unfortunately, that have dropped by the wayside a bit there. Dennis Van Bielen, by the way, still well inside the top ten. Seven places gained. Danny Lee's got five places gained as well. So those guys have done a good job of turning their night around. Nils Kaur, well, race leader, has gained eight places. He's actually the biggest mover in the field as well. Can you believe that? Great stuff by Nils Kaur once again. And with a minute and a half left to go, I'm intrigued as when he's going to cross the line here, you know. I think we might still get two laps because it's about 1 minute 24 and he's crossed hmm. it with 126 left to go. Ooh, <laughs> this is going to be spicy close. Yeah, another lap for Simon and Christopher Smith to try and attack the rear end of Snell's cause BMW. Again, Simon really attacking the curbs they oh, often no. see that from him but he's now attacking the rear end too much late on the brakes gets it to the back end could have involved a big incident there nearly turning Christopher Smith around but that BMW just seemingly stood up to the punishment yeah. and kept on going it didn't seem to notice it McLaren just bounced off didn't it <laughs> yeah well, no armour piercing shells there but yeah, very, very lucky that. But Simon wouldn't have meant to do that. We saw earlier that he was trying to have a bit of a look down the inside, wasn't he, and put the pressure on. Oh, look at that by Ben Chalcraft around the outside of Toby Johns. Can he make it stick on the exit? No, Toby's little McLaren gets a great squirt off the corner. Ben's still looking down the inside, though, trying to make the move again. He's just trying to clip the apex, and oh, Toby's really squeezing him to the apex there. We saw him do it earlier and thought it's just because he didn't know he was there, but he's really not leaving a lot of room that time round. And Matt Slight, he's going to be holding back a little bit here, isn't he? Because he won't want these two to come together in front of him and get caught up in it. And I tell you what, Ben Chalcraft is putting in an almighty defence. Nils Core is actually going to win the race here because it's going to be counted as the final lap. Fifth win of the season for Nils Core here at Lednon. What a great drive that is. Christopher Smith second and Simon Povey third. Wow, sorry, that suddenly came around very quickly, everybody. James Holman, what a drive to fourth place from a spin at turn one. And Kyle Ridley and Dennis Van Bielen, those two will be well happy with that. Great points for those guys in the Beamers. Danny Lee, good recovery as well. Taylor Adams, eighth place. He'll be devastated with tonight. Taylor came here with a two-point deficit in the championship, and he comes here with an even bigger one. Toby Johns, a top ten finish. Well done to Toby. Yeah. Ben Chalcraft, what a drive that is. Ben's had every single panel of that BMW knocked in tonight. Bless him. Mark Johnson, Ed, and Mike Murphy, Gary Tall, Heinz Mayer in there as well. 
sorry, Heinzmayer just behind these guys. Uh, what's going to happen for the last championship point? I think it's been decided. Martin Kenyon's dropped a bit further down from Kim and Rob. There's Heinz Mayer across the line. Philip Hopley next up. And then it's going to be Kim Such and Rob Sharp to cross the line. <laughs> Rob tried it till the very end there, Ed, but yeah, yeah, didn't, didn't quite not get quite. it done. But Nils Court, well, he stood supreme once again tonight, and that is his fifth race win of the season, making a big imprint tonight, a second place and a first place. Well, you could argue that after the winter tour, Nils was not a fan of the sprint racing at all. But tonight, the French circuit of Lednon has really done him a favour. I mean, that and his great driving, let's face it. <laughs> Really, it's the wonderful stuff there, everyone. I mean, I have to say, James Holman is back through the field from being stoned last. Yeah, in the first that's remarkable. Lap was just beyond belief. I mean, it just shows that even if you have the a really rough start in these races, as long as you keep yourself out of trouble in these sprints, take advantage of the chaos and the carnage. Yeah, you can easily get yourself a great result. And he's almost he wasn't far off the podium to be no. fair to him. That was a mind-bending result, that, for James mm. Holman, the fact that he did that. Like I say, I had to watch the replay and just see it with my own eyes because I could not believe that he was back <laughs> up there inside the top ten. Nils Core takes his fifth win of the season, another step towards a championship win for him, but still, this is only just the start of the second half of the season. So let's see how it goes. What a drive that is by Christopher Smith, though. He was rapid all throughout that race and all throughout tonight, right with Nils Core and only just beat Simon Povey to the flag. But I tell you what, he held him off for a while, so great job, Chris. Simon Povey, as mentioned, in third place. James Holman, fourth. Kyle Ridley has another great night of sprint racing ahead of Dennis Van Beelen, who gets a sixth place. Danny Lee recovers really well to seventh. I bet his stream's good to watch. Taylor Adams, again, Taylor will be devastated after tonight. Absolutely devastated, but still big points from a top 10 finish in that one. Toby Johns, what a great night for Toby. Really busy night for him. He finishes ninth. Ben Chalcraft in 10th. He'll be really pleased with 10th, to be fair. He got knocked everywhere around the circuit tonight. Matt Slight finishes 11th. John Roberts in 12th. He was having a really good run, was John. It's a shame that he dropped down a little bit. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry, I couldn't breathe then. Paul Goffin finished 13th ahead of Mark Johnson. Mike Murphy was 15th, just ahead of Gary Tull with Heinz Meyer and then Philip Hopley next up. Kim Such and Rob Sharp complete the 20. Martin Kenyon just misses out on points, and then the drivers that were a lap down or more were Peter Brill, Dean Powell and Andy Marston. Well, another very busy night of sprint racing out of the way there, Ed. This circuit, it was always going to be an unknown, but I thought it did a fantastic job tonight. It was a great venue, I'd say. It really was, and of course, the new circuit with the sprint racing format always throws up a few concerns and questions from the drivers, but I think it's been answered thoroughly with a resounding, well, brilliant race, wasn't it? Brilliant race one and an excellent race two. The time just absolutely flew by, which is a sign of a great evening's worth of racing. Absolutely was, and speaking of flying by, I'm sure a lot of people thought that about James Holman in that second race. James, one very simple question. How the hell were you facing the wrong way in last place at Turn 1 and still finish fourth? Very good question. <laughs> uh, I was just, yeah, I was stunned really. I just kept head down and move after move and I just had to Chris Hughes come up. I've got a chance of fourth here. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> considering I was backwards in Turn 1, I'd take that every day of the week and uh, twice, on, twice on Tuesday. So uh, it was a silly mistake to make and it was actually a little bit annoying because I think I had some good pace in that second race. But... Um, Never mind. <laughs> it, I was going to say, it was a tough night. I mean, the sprint race nights always are. They're a completely different kettle of fish. But, you know, a circuit like this as well. I, I mean, from where we were, it really lent itself to the format tonight. Did you find as a driver that it was an exciting place to race? Yeah, I'd never, I'd never actually turned a lap. Either. I bought it a couple of seasons ago when it came out. But I never actually turned a lap on it until uh, about two nights ago or something. So, um, no, it was... Uh, a really interesting challenge a lot of sort of combination corners where one leads into the other normally i'd be really strong at that sort of circuit and i was I really struggled i don't know if it was because of the blind apexes or something but um yeah i just couldn't get that big old murk i just couldn't get it turned into the hairpins the way i liked so um it was a real big challenge but really enjoyed it the racing was great um, everyone was really fair and yeah it was really cool because you could set someone up it's like two or three corners before nearly yeah. and uh, sort of plan your move quite quickly. Had to be planning quite quickly, but um, it was good. It was really good fun.
Well, that's what we love to hear, James. Always love to hear it. And it's great to have you guys, you know, really battling it out and, you know, having a drive through the field like you had to in that second race. It was awesome to watch. Uh, we go to a circuit that's very different next time. We go to Monza, where there's going to be a lot of slipstreaming going on. How do you feel about going there with the big beefy Merc? Do you think it'll have any strengths there? Uh, maybe over the curves and the chicane. Um, it's, it's good at handling the curb, so maybe over the chicane in the turn to, was it the De La Roja, I think it is, uh, the second, second chicane. Um, so, but generally the traction's poor, top speed isn't great, so I don't really expect a great deal. Um, but, um, well, look, just got to stick in that toe and try and be there, at, try and save as much fuel, I guess, and uh, be there at the end of the race. Well, we know that you're good at that, mate. We'll always refer to Jerez last season in that little Porsche when you were back with us and that result based on the strategy it was epic. So we hope to see more of that. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a quick shout out to, James, before we go? Yeah, obviously Chris did a fantastic job tonight. He did. Um, it was he was really unlucky. They got slowed down just at the wrong time. I think he probably would have won that race, to be honest. Oh, it was a slowdown, was it? We didn't know yeah, that. We didn't yeah, realise. Yeah. So um, he was uh, a little bit gutted there, but uh, he was a great performance from him tonight. And he uh, yeah, was really mixing it with the, the big boys up front. So um, yeah, fair play to him. Great team night, obviously, for us. Uh, I think we extended our lead quite nicely there tonight. So um, mm. that was good. So a big shout out to Chris. And uh, obviously, the same old shout out to Jim. Shout out to you guys. Great to have Ed back it as is. well. And, <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, obviously, shout out to my mum. She's still in hospital, bless her. So hopefully, she'll be she'll be back out this week. So, uh, yeah, so fingers crossed then. Yeah. Oh, bless her. Well, we we send our best as well, James, from uh, from everyone here as well, and wish her a speedy recovery. But thank you very much, mate. It's always a pleasure to speak to you, James, and another amazing night. And we look forward to seeing you at Monza, buddy. Have a good one. Cheers, mate. See you next week. Cheers. Bless him. James is such a star, isn't he, Ed? But I, I still, I, I can't believe that that car was facing the wrong way at turn one and somehow he just ended up in fourth place at the end of the race. What a drive. Yeah, it was a brilliant recovery drive. That was a, I think it's fair to say, Christopher Smith-esque recovery drive. Mm. It was at that sort of level, which is, I think, high praise, to be fair, because the amount of recovery drives we've seen him pull off. Oof ridiculous absolutely and uh, another driver that had a great night of it to be fair just finished behind james holman in that race was kyle ridley kyle you you seem to benefit quite well from these sprint race nights talk us through that one it looked like a belter oh i don't I, i'm honestly surprised i uh woke up with no practice had a monitor issue during quali and i just raced my little ass off i <laughs> had no pace managed to gain like what, 13 spots in lap one that was an insane lap and yeah i just got the p turn got the reverse pole and well you know me at the front i love to defend it i tried i did i led five laps so i'm happy about that and then once the boys got past i just drifted further and further back but hey a p10 and a p5 with a track i've never even heard of i'm pretty happy with it Absolutely, I'm not surprised. It looked like a riot though as a circuit because we rode on board with a number of you guys over the course of the night, as we naturally do, and it looked like the weird characteristic of it having a lot of runoff around every single bit of the track, it seemed like quite off-putting, like it was difficult to see apexes, wasn't it? It was difficult to know where the racing line is because some corners you could extend with no Xs and other tracks you put the wheel over the right line and you get a 1X. Mm. It was certainly an eye racing issue let's say to um, get the track limits <laughs> right but no there was a few blind crests that i just couldn't see and i had holman pass me there because i just missed the corner i was like oh, oh there it is <laughs> but it's too late by the time you see it so uh, i definitely need a little more track knowledge around here I'm gonna do a lot more laps and hopefully next time i'm here whatever it may be I'm not so I'm not as lost as a uh, Spectre Crusoe. <laughs> well, it's certainly great to watch you though, and obviously more championship points as well. It must be uh, quite a confidence boost knowing what the quality of the field is like that you're mixing it with the big boys. Oh, absolutely. I am. Um, yeah, I uh, I know I'm a, I can be, get top tens on the enduro races, so getting the top five in a race track where I've got no idea where I'm going is an achievement in itself. So awesome. Well, it's great to watch, Kyle. Always a pleasure, mate. And uh, it's obviously lovely to have uh, such an international grid with yourself representing the wonderful Isle of Australia, let's say. Um, is there anyone who you'd like to give a shout-out to before you go, mate? I just want to thank Sim Racing Magazine for putting this all together. I'm having, always having fun with these. Um, yourself and Ed for the commentary and my friends and family who may want be watching. Thank you. Beautiful stuff, Kyle. Always a pleasure, mate. Enjoy yourself and we'll see you in a week. Cheers. Cheers.
Well, there we go, Kyle Ridley. Another driver that really benefited tonight from the sprint racing, but, you know, you've got to be actually there to put the car around the circuit, you know. It wasn't the format that just gave points to him. He led the race for a bit, and he did an awesome job, didn't he, Ed? He did a really great job, and it was just... So many drivers, I think, did such a great job. I think it's really great to highlight him because he was always involved, wasn't he? Always mm. in the mix, but never stepping over the limit, which I think is, oh, is a god. great to see. Cool. Oh, here, uh, well, I'm surprised he wasn't swearing when we dragged him into the box, to be honest with you. Uh, Monsieur Povey joins us in the box. Sorry, Ed, I, I actually interrupted you using Simon's voice there, but Mr. <laughs> Mr. Povey, welcome to the box, my friend. You just sort of popped up out of nowhere in qualifying and then won the race. Talk us through it. Um, yeah, can't remember much of race one now after race two. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty, pretty battered after that one as well, but it was, it was good fun. Well, that, that's the um, main but, thing, isn't it, I suppose? That there was, I mean, we've spoken to Kyle and uh, we spoke to James earlier on and, you know, there was a lot of drivers that got knocked about quite a bit, but everyone still seems to have enjoyed himself, didn't they? It looked like a great place to be. Yeah, and because it's hard to overtake, when I got knocked, I think, I don't know whether it was Rob that went into the back of me or, or somebody and I kind of had a half spin and dropped down and I could see it looked like quite a gap to the cars ahead. But because people couldn't overtake, we were just kind of all bunched up within another lap or so. And, and uh, yeah, you're just kind of waiting for your moment, hoping that you pick the right lane when it when it kind of comes to Tina's. But, yeah, it was good fun. And what I just hadn't got anything at the end to fight fight with. The tyres are gone, and I think... I, I have a feeling that Neil's had a bit of damage as well. Mm. Uh, but I'd, I'd got a few knocks, and it was kind of the draft that was keeping me up there, really. In the bends, I was okay, but I, I needed them to just to be able to stick with them. It's interesting you say that, actually, because Ed and I were debating whether there would be much of a slipstream effect here. I know that it's quite important up the hill and over the crest on the start-finish straight, but was it really noticeable as a driver? Uh, it, it was for me, yeah. Yeah, because uh, BMW seems slow out of the final bend, and if, if I didn't mess that up, then I could get a decent run on them mm. um, until I took a little bit too much damage. I think I hit, went into Matt Slight uh, when there was a big checkup. And once I got that front end damage, my, my top speed was quite down. But, yeah. Oh, well, it was interesting to uh, to hear that it made a yeah, difference, of course. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it back. <laughs> it was. I can't, can't really remember what happened. Though. I just remember quite a few crashes and cars going off everywhere. So it's, it's going to be a good watch. I think Ed will agree. It was absolute chaos, wasn't it, Ed? But it was great entertaining chaos. Mm. Yeah. It was just awesome That's fun, it. Simon. It was, it, was, it was great just to be a part of and be back because I've missed you all. I missed you. Yeah, we yeah. missed you, Ed. Be back and, and see you winning yet again. You know. That's Ed's favourite thing. <laughs> yeah, Simon. Oh, Simon's on the grid. Oh, who's going to win? Oh, I wonder who that would be. <laughs> the one in that daft pink. Got sick of that when I was, yeah, got sick of that when I was driving. And I'm, I, can't, nah, I'm not, I can't say that. It's always great to see you, Simon. Great to have you here. <laughs> you too, Ed. Well, uh, unfortunately, that is all we have time for tonight before we uh, all get married. So, Simon, is there anyone you'd like to give a quick <laughs> shout-out to, mate? Thanks to you guys and Andy for putting this on every week. And uh, I just want to shout out to Gary Tall as well because uh, he, he pushed me quite hard and pushed me to practice more than I would have uh, this week and it definitely paid off. He's, he's a good teammate. Absolutely. And he's finally sorted his technical issues out as well. Which yeah, is he made it all the way see. through a race. That's amazing. It's lovely to see. But awesome, yeah. awesome stuff. Great to see you as always, Simon. Thank you very much cool. for joining us, mate. And we look forward to seeing you at Monza, hopefully. Fingers crossed, maybe. Yes, yeah, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Crack it. Cheers, Thanks, Bye. Well, there we go. Simon Povey, season one champion of the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. And I tell you what, Ed, I'm, you know, I'm not going to try and bring it up. I'm not trying to wind you up. But how long ago does that seem now that we did season one of this championship? With those first, That first race at Road Atlanta, it just feels like forever ago, doesn't it? It does. It does. And you make me think that I need to get back behind the wheel and do some more racing. Oh, <laughs> well, we, hopefully I'll be getting my uh, Sim set up. Because right now, the one thing I want to do is just get behind the wheel and do some racing just like these boys did tonight. And what racing we were treated to. It really does make you just want to get back behind the wheel and get in the sim and have some action yourself. 
Absolutely does. Makes me want to have a lie down as well at the same time. But what a fantastic <laughs> venue Lednon turned out to be in the French countryside. It's a circuit that, like I said at the top of the broadcast, not many people had heard of, not many people had seen before. A lot of the drivers had to acquire the circuit for tonight because they had no other time or reason to buy it before now. I think only nine drivers in the grid only had the circuit before this season even started. What a great place to go racing. It has been a real treat for the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. A final shout out as well to our wonderful sponsors, Oris Digital, Crockery Direct, Derbyshire Holiday Homes and Bespoke Shelters. It's been fantastic to have Ed back in the box as well. So thank you very much for returning, Ed. We're glad you're all doing well. And of course, we'll be back with you all again at Monza in a week's time where it's going to be an absolute draft fest. But that's all from me and Ed here on Chaz Draycott Media for the Sim Racing Magazine GT4 Challenge. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you in a week. Four French drivers at the French Grand Prix trying to win this on the final lap. The three wide again, Guillaume down the inside. Guillaume moves across, they're both in front of Milan and Pugge. Before you know it, we find ourselves here in the very final race of the competition. And then they see truck racing and they think, this is crazy, you know, these are five ton machines, 1200 horsepower brake. Oh, look at that switchback. Oh, he's been looking at the switch to show out. Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com.